All right, on this one, here we have two numbers that are being subtracted, so I would be looking at the difference of two perfect squares. So I just need to look, is 9 a perfect square? Yeah, sure it is. We can split that up into 3 and 3. What about 25? Well, that would split up into 5 and 5. P can be split up into P squared times P squared. So what we have then is in the first term, which is going to be squared, we've got 3 p squared squared minus, well, 5 squared. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because it shows my a value inside this set of parentheses and my b value inside this set of parentheses because I have two perfect squares being subtracted. So if we look back, that should have given us a minus b times a plus b. And all I've got to do is replace a's, both a's, with my 3p squared. But I also need to replace both the b values with 5. And then, of course, I would check this by using the FOIL method right there. So let's try it the other way then. And we're still going to keep our 9p to the power of 4 and our negative 25. But this time, I'm going to add 0p squared. And I need more space. I guess I didn't actually name it. There we go. Okay. So in this case, what I have, and the reason I've got p squared there is because, again, this is p to the power 4. I need this middle term to be squared. I guess the, co the, the variable is what I'm talking about specifically. So what if it was p to the third? Then okay. So we're in one of those situations where we've got to take coefficient of p to the power 4 multiplied by, I guess this would be the c value right here. So 9 times 25, really negative 25. And what do we get on that? 225. And we need two factors of 225 that when we add the two factors, we're going to get 0, right? So I'm thinking 15 and negative 15. Because when we add these two together, we should get 0. So I'm going to split my 0p squared into 15p squared and negative 15p squared. Of course, we still have the 9p to the power of 4 and the minus 25. That's the, really the nice thing about perfect squares like this is it works out, well, kind of perfectly. Now, in these two terms, we can factor out a p squared, and it looks like 3. So inside the parentheses, now I've got a 3p squared plus 5. And then we're going to factor out a negative 5, it looks like, from these two terms. Well, these two terms. And that leaves me with 3p squared minus 5. And so, Wouldn't it be plus five? thank you, yes, plus 5, thank you. Uh, we can factor out then from both these terms a 3p squared plus 5. 3p squared plus 5. And then we just have what was left over, the 3p squared and the minus 5. We'll close it. And that's what we had in the first place. 